So into. we're about to do the rain, which is sick because we finally get to use this. I'm and they made it way I'm better than out. I made it. Al and Drew. Do what now? You guys are awesome. That's all. So next is the rain. So you want rain in your film or video, but you want full control over it instead of just waiting for the sky to give it to you. Well, I recently needed a lot of rain in my most recent short film, Goodbye Kiss. If you want to watch that, the link is in the description. And there were quite a few shots that needed rain, so I had to figure this out for myself. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I did to create the rain effect in the film. We actually made rain a couple different ways for different reasons. The first thing my gut told me was to get on YouTube and find a tutorial for a rain machine. So that's exactly what I did. Tom Antos has a pretty great tutorial, which I will leave in the description. But while using his video as a template, we came up with a few more modifications as well as some tricks to making it work better for our needs. So instead of telling you exactly how to build the machine, I'm going to show you what we modified and some tips to using the DIY rain machine. So the machine is basically made out of PVC pipe and sprinkler heads. I made mine about 20 feet long with four sprinkler heads on it. This gave us a nice rain spread as well as length to make sure the rain could cover a lot of area. I also added a little thumb valve at the end to quickly turn the rain on and off. Even though I had mounting holes on either end for light stands, the pipe just didn't hold up very well. The best solution for this seemed to be holding the pipe with a Mafer clamp and mounting that on larger light stands rather than using the small standard light stand. Now I think you could probably get away with using the small standard light stands in the original method, but we actually had the tools to do this right, so that's what we ended up doing. The next issue was the sagging. Once you filled the pipe with water, it really wants to sag in the middle. And you can't just put a light stand there or else it'll probably be in your wide shots. I tried bracing it with some wood like Tom did in his video, but this still wasn't working great. This is where my gaffer Al had a great idea. Him and his grip decided to create like a suspension bridge effect to support the center of the pipe. Using a grip arm and some metal safety wire, they suspended the middle of the pipe, which ended up working great. So there's definitely a learning curve when using a rain machine. It can be difficult in some shots, but for the most part, it worked out pretty well. Now you probably heard this before, but the key to seeing rain on video is backlight, which isn't too hard to do. You put a light behind your rain to backlight the water, which edges out the water and makes you be able to see the rain on video. But for us, we had quite a few problems with this because we were a lot of times shooting right into this fence and we didn't have a way of putting the light behind the fence. So some shots don't look quite as good as others. The rain isn't quite as prominent, but we did the best we could and it worked out okay. So just remember the backlight and the look of your background will dramatically determine how much rain you will see on camera. Now there's another way to make rain for video and it's actually a lot cheaper and easier than a full rain machine. Sometimes it's just too cumbersome to try to bring the rain machine in, and that's when we kind of discovered this other method. But before I show you that, I'm going to talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present your work online. As creatives, we all need a place to host our work, and I've been using Squarespace to show off my videos for the better part of a decade now. I started with one of their pre-existing website templates and then modified it to my liking. I changed my background to black to make sure my videos really popped on the website and were just viewed in the best format. And then I'm able to just embed videos from YouTube or Vimeo right into the site. Squarespace also reformats your website for mobile automatically, so you don't have to worry about things getting out of place on a phone. So if you're anything like me to present yourself online, you can just do that with Squarespace. Click the link in the description to get 10% off, and I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, so like I said, after building the rain machine, we discovered another technique for creating rain. And you're going to chuckle when I show it to you. Look how awesome the rain is. Dude, this looks really good. Why did we ever make a rain machine? I don't know. <laughs> Dude, I'm over here drinking my coffee and literally- I hate- drink. I hate everything about All we need is Al's thumbs. So if you take a regular garden hose and nozzle, you'll find that the pressure and spread just isn't good enough for most rain shots. That's where the rain machine comes into play because it gives you a really nice big spread over 20 feet and you can just mount it in places and it just works really well. It's very controllable. But the nozzle that I have to water the plants in my backyard was actually quite different. Now, I don't know the exact nozzle that I have, but I linked one that looks similar in the description below, so you can try that out if you want. Probably try this first before building a whole rain machine. So unlike your common nozzles, this one gives you a lot more pressure and spread. The trick to using it is to basically just shoot it into the air as high as you can and waving it back and forth just to cover the area that's in the frame. Now there's some practice with this to get it to feel right, 
but we had pretty good success with it. Actually, all of these port shots and the car shots were done with the nozzle and not the rain machine. The nozzle seems to add a lot of extra pressure, which sends the water high into the air, making it fall down just like real rain. Now, this may not work for every shot because you may not be able to get the spread wide enough, but the rain machine kind of has that same problem as well. Now, I don't want to tell you to use different focal lengths so you can back farther away and stuff like that because I don't want to compromise your film, but you're always going to have a little bit of that issue when using rain unless you have a really, really big rain machine. And the last thing when it comes to shooting in the rain is to protect your camera and gear. We use floppies and trash bags accordingly to make sure nothing got too wet. But actually, if you're using the nozzle, that helps a lot because you can spray away from the camera in a lot of situations. You can control exactly where the water is spreading. Okay, and that's how we created all of the rain in my film. If you like this video, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. And as always, until next time, guys, I'm Spencer Sakurai. See ya.